fitness desde el comienzo de la pandemia. Los hospitales se están llenando de personas no vacunadas infectadas con la variante Delta y cada vez más jóvenes se encuentran en unidades de cuidados intensivos. Los niños menores de 12 años todavía no están aprobados para vacunarse y la registra estatal no ha financiado el aprendizaje remoto. Las vacunas son la forma más segura de combatir la pandemia de COVID y estamos encantados de ver a los distritos escolares intensificar sus esfuerzos para vacunar a los padres y estudiantes elegibles como HISD. Pero dada la rapidez con la, con la que se propaga la variante Delta, se deben utilizar todas las herramientas eficaces. Se debe exigir el uso de enmascaramiento para mantener seguros a nuestros estudiantes, sus padres y los empleados de las, de las escuelas al comenzar de, de, de las clases este mes. Hoy, los sindicatos de empleados escolares, padres y estudiantes están aquí para exigir a HISD y otros distritos que protegen a todos los que están en las escuelas. Todos los estudiantes merecen entornos de aprendizaje seguros y todo el personal merece lugares de trabajo seguros. El primer deber de los funcionarios escolares es brindar seguridad y deben usar su autoridad para hacerlo, independientemente de la orden ejecutiva del gobernador Abbott, que está tratando de bloquear eso. HISD debe aprobar pautas de seguridad que siguen la guía de los CDC y otros expertos de la salud pública, y esto incluso los mandatos de máscaras. Felicitamos al superintendente de HISD, House, por presentar una propuesta para exigir máscaras en todas las instalaciones escolares y autobuses. Y queremos que la Junta Escolar de HISD adoptar esa recomendación mañana, como otros distritos en Austin y Dallas y Spring ISD. Hoy escuchará a maestros, padres y estudiantes y líderes electos que comprenden los peligros que enfrentamos y la importancia de una acción inmediata. Good morning. Uh, my name is Daniel Santos. I'm a 15-year veteran middle school teacher, proud HISD teacher, and also the executive vice president of the Houston Federation of Teachers. And this morning, I want to share some thoughts with you all. Every student in HISD deserves a safe learning environment, and every worker, teachers, paraprofessionals, bus drivers, custodians, food service workers, all of us deserve a safe workplace. The CDC, local and state public health officials, and the entire medical community have made it very clear. Mask mandates help keep our kids, our co-workers, and our community safe. But instead of listening to public health experts, Governor Greg Abbott and the Texas Education Agency are playing politics with our children's lives. The Abbott administration has used the emergency public health powers it was entrusted with to block school districts from keeping our kids safe. The latest guidance from the TEA issued in the midst of a massive spike in COVID cases goes as far as to say schools don't have to inform parents if a positive case is confirmed or launch contact tracing. This is the same agency that thinks they know how to run our school districts better than we. They're putting students, staff, and our entire community at further risk at a time when our hospitals are completely full. Union members know that our first responsibility is to keep kids safe. Public health experts have been very clear that masks and vaccines work, especially as the Delta variant surge spreads. 
and we urge the Houston Independent School District Board of Trustees to join Austin and Dallas and San Antonio and Fort Worth in requiring masks in our schools and facilities and for Abbott to rescind his executive order. If Governor Greg Abbott won't do it, he should get out of the way. School districts need to step up and will step up to protect our communities. Para nuestro público hispanohablante, todos los estudiantes de HISD merecen asistir a escuelas que se han comprometido a tomar medidas de seguridad preventivas contra COVID. Y todos los trabajadores merecen un lugar de trabajo seguro. Toda la comunidad médica ha dejado en claro los mandatos a mantener, los mandatos de cubre bocas junto con vacunas ayudan a mantener seguro a nuestros niños, a nuestras comunidades, nuestros trabajadores. Pero en lugar de escuchar a los expertos médicos, el gobernador Greg Abbott está jugando a juegos políticos y arriesgando la vida de nuestros hijos. Los miembros del sindicato de maestros saben que nuestra primera responsabilidad es el bienestar de nuestros estudiantes y su salud. Por eso el sindicato de maestros apoya la medida de Houston ISD de obligar el uso de cubrebocas en los planteles. Gracias a todos. And Anna? Hello, my name is Anna McNaught. I stand here today not only as a representative of Houston in Action, but also as a mother of two children, Felipe and Fausto, who are heading back to school in two weeks. Our work at Houston in Action is centered around working together to reduce systemic barriers to civic participation and to fight for equity and access to all Houstonians. Central to equity is our concern for those around us, the most vulnerable and the underserved. Historical inequities have directly led to today's COVID conditions, where communities of color often have limited access to healthcare, mistrusting government and fewer resources, and as a result, lower rates of vaccination and higher rates of COVID complications and deaths. We at Houston in Action have been working tirelessly in our campaign for the last six months to provide equitable access to the COVID vaccine to the greater Houston area. And we also have supported parents in the last couple of weeks as they have been wanting to advocate for safety measures in their schools. Our family has been going virtual for a year and a half, and we were so excited in June to go back to normal this school year. My children have made so many sacrifices as the children of so many other parents that are here and also that have talked to us about these challenges. It is our responsibility as parents to fight to make sure that they are protected. I have heard from so many parents about the fears and anxiety that they have felt this last couple of weeks as the COVID-19 Delta variant has surged and our hospitals are overflowing. Delta is more contagious and potentially more harmful to our children. And we cannot pretend that we are through this pandemic and stop our vigilance. I ask today that all regional school districts follow the guidance of the CDC and local public health agencies to keep schools safe, including mandates for wearing masks, in all schools, buses, and district facilities for all students, staff, parents, and visitors. We know that safety standards such as contact tracing and also temperatures checking is so important to the safety of our children that can go back to school. Every child deserves a safe learning environment and masks and virtual options are common sense solutions and should not be controversial. Thank you. Ahora en español. Hola, mi nombre es Ana McNaught y estoy aquí con ustedes uh, representando a mi organización Houston in Action, pero también como madre de dos niños, Felipe y Fausto, que están a punto de regresar a la escuela en un par de días. Nuestro trabajo en Houston in Action está centrado en proveer oportunidades para que las personas puedan participar activamente en las cosas y en los asuntos que les impactan y benefician de día a día. Nuestra visión en Houston in Action es que nosotros sabemos que históricamente hay poblaciones vulnerables 
y que han sido excluidas de los sistemas que se supone que tienen que beneficiarnos. Nosotros hemos estado trabajando arduamente estos seis últimos meses para proveer información y acceso a la vacuna de COVID-19. Nosotros sabemos en Houston en Action que nuestras comunidades de color han sido desproporcionalmente afectadas e impactadas por COVID y también uh, ha causado esto que muchas personas hayan muerto y también hayan sufrido estragos por COVID. Les quiero contar que mi familia has, ha, ha, hemos estado haciendo escuela virtual por el último año y medio y que ha sido todo un reto y mis hijos han estado sacrificando muchísimo para mantenernos sanos a toda nuestra familia. Nosotros sabemos y queremos que nuestros hijos re regresen a la escuela porque pensamos que es muy importante que vayan y estén interactuando con sus compañeros y compañeras. Y estábamos súper felices de pensar que todo iba a regresar a la normalidad cuando en junio vimos que los casos estaban disminuyendo. Ahora, he hablado con tantos papás y mamás que últimamente han tenido mucha ansiedad y que no pueden dormir en las noches pensando en la seguridad de sus hijos regresando a la escuela. Sabemos que Delta es mucho más contagioso y que puede ser potencialmente más peligroso para nuestros hijos e hija. Y es por eso que no podemos pretender que esta pandemia ha terminado. Estoy pidiendo a todos los distritos escolares de la región que sigan la guía del CDC y de los expertos en salud pública y que también puedan eh, tener todos los mandatos de seguridad, incluyendo cubrebocas y chequeo de temperaturas, así como tener el derecho de saber quién ha estado enfermo de COVID en las escuelas. Cada niño y niña en el distrito y en todo nuestro país debería de tener un seguro, un acceso seguro a su escuela y a su educación. Y los cubrebocas y opciones virtuales son soluciones de sentido común y no deberían de ser controversiales. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Anna. My name is Candace Houston, and I'm the proud president of Alden American Federation of Teachers, a former business teacher for 16 years with Alden ISD. I am present today to represent the other regional school districts and unions present about the mass mandate. On Monday, Dallas and Austin ISD announced mass mandates, and even Saqqara ISD's board approved it on yesterday. Tomorrow, HISD Board of Trustees will vote on Superintendent House's proposal to require students, staff, and visitors at all HISD schools, buses, and facilities to wear a mask. And we are fully supportive of this. Last week, yes, yes last week I joined my fellow union brothers and sisters from across the Gulf Coast to call on the Gulf Coast school districts to follow the guidance of CDC and local public health agencies by issuing mandates for wearing masks in all schools, buses, district facilities by students, staff, parents, and visitors. I was informed on yesterday that Alden ISD right now is not requiring mask mandates, but they will strongly recommend that employees and staff and students to do it. You know, however, that's not enough. We're hoping HISD, Board of Trustees approve it because what we know is other school districts, they tend to follow the lead of HISD. Alden ISD and other school districts must take action to ensure our students have safe learning environments and our teachers and support staff have safe workplaces. We're working every week with Alden ISD and other partners to increase vaccination rates. In fact, Alden ISD will be hosting a vaccination for students on Monday, August the 16th, and we are fully supportive of that. But there still isn't a vaccine for children under 12. Texas American Federation of Teachers, who we're the AFT, I'm affiliate of, they sent a survey to members across the state. 78% of the participants, which is over 7,000, stated that they wanted mass mandates in their school districts. 
Let's listen to these people. Let's get mass mandates in the school districts. Thank you. Now I'm going to introduce Tab. Uh, good morning. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Tab Aga. I have two children who attend HISD schools, one of whom is autistic. I'm honored and privileged to be here on behalf of SPED's parents and families like mine whose children might literally not have the ability to speak for themselves. My son attends Neff Early Learning Center. It is the only full inclusion early childhood center in the state of Texas. The byproduct of these inclusion initiatives is a beautiful display of empathy and acceptance that I'm so grateful to be a part of. Over the past year and a half, with the help of therapists and teachers, virtual IEPs and meetings, my son has made huge strides under the virtual setting. He's doing great. Most importantly, he is safe and healthy. While neurotypical children are often a 24-7 job, raising children like my son are 48-14. I've done the math on that. It takes all present members to always take inventory of him. There's constant redirecting and hand-holding, countless breakdowns and heightened anxiety and stress levels. And as you are aware, elementary and early learning ages are ineligible for vaccinations. Every child in HISD, no matter what their ability, deserves a safe learning environment. According to pre-Delta research, individuals with autism and developmental disabilities are four times more likely to contract and two and a half times more likely to die from COVID-19. With the Delta variant's rate of transmission, we could anticipate those numbers getting far worse. Children like my son may have trouble understanding information or practicing preventative measures such as hand washing and social distancing. Asking children to wear masks is task enough. Asking a child with developmental delays or sensory challenges is a monumental challenge. In many cases, children in this demographic are unable to effectively communicate symptoms of illness. Redirecting and reteaching these behaviors takes months, sometimes years before mastery. The introduction of these students back to campuses could be catastrophic. If there are risks at students, then there are risks for families, and there are risks for teachers and caregivers, and ultimately an at-risk community. What I would like to remind you of is the, is the theme of this virus is that it, all it takes is one. We are two weeks, two weeks away from school. There have been no guidelines for special education population, no plans or, or alternatives for at-risk children and families. Other districts like Katie, Umble, Fort Bend, Sci Fair, and Connor ISD had, have adopted remote learning for some students. I believe that all of you wish to do the right thing and that you value all students' safety in this district. We have made it this far. We are asking you, do not put our children at risk. Use the ESSER funding and offer a virtual learning option for at-risk families that need it. Thank you. As a rising senior, I have I want to have a sense of relief and control, even if it's even if it's in the smallest, the most impactful way, and that's by wearing a mask. Okay. Sorry, um, my name is Ana Angeles or Ana Angeles. Um, I'm a 12th grade student, and I go to Northside High School. And as a rising senior, I want to have a sense of relief and control, even if it's in the smallest but most impactful way, and that is by wearing a mask, since we have no option. We have no option but to go in person. We have to do the best we can to prevent. We have, we have to do the best we can to prevent spreading the new variant or COVID in general. I have family members that have weak immune systems, and I fear that the lenient behavior we display by not mandating masks could potentially increase the risk of having to restart as a whole, infecting more people, resulting in more deaths. It is unsafe and dangerous to believe that things will go back to normal simply if we decide to look the other way. Ahora en español. Como estudiante de último año, quiero tener la sensación de alivio, incluso si es de la manera más pequeña, pero más impactante, y eso es usando una mascarilla. Como no tenemos otra opción que ir en persona, tenemos que hacer lo mejor que podemos para evitar la propagación de la nueva variante o COVID en general. 
Tengo familiares que tienen sistemas inmunológicos débiles y me temo que el comportamiento indulgente que mostramos al no exigir mascarillas podría aumentar potencialmente el riesgo de tener que reiniciar en su conjunto e infectar a más personas y provocar más muertes. Es inseguro y peligroso creer que las cosas volverán a normalidad simplemente si decidimos mirar para el otro lado. Gracias. My name is Allie Fitzpatrick. I'm a parent in Sci Fair School District. I have two twin boys who are going into second grade. The Sci Fair Lead Safely plan that was released on Monday is neither safe nor does it lead. Largely last year, what mitigated the spread of COVID was virtual learning, masking, social distancing, quarantining when exposed, and contact tracing. This year, so far, SciFair has only committed to providing virtual learning. For kids under 12 who cannot be vaccinated yet, universal masking is one of the most effective and efficient strategies for preventing SARS transmission. Masks must be mandated. All of the studies done to show how children can attend school safely involves children wearing masks. Masking zones, as has been proposed in Sci Fair, will not work because this is an aerosolized virus. It also pits children who wear masks against children who aren't wearing masks because the adults in the room won't do their job. Don't do this to our kids. A mask mandate is not a risk to anyone. Not requiring masks puts children and their families at risk, and it will result in more disease spread, more death, lifelong complications, and medical trauma. Our kids have had enough. They can barely cope with the past year and a half. You owe it to them, Dr. Henry, to mandate masks in our schools. Choosing not to implement a mask mandate and staying out of the political fray is not an option. It's making a deadly political statement through silent complicity. Dr. Henry, you know the right thing to do is to mandate masks. Show the parents, kids, teachers, and staff of Sci Fair that you truly are in our corner. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for the kind words that have been said today and the words that are going to make a difference in the lives of people. I want to thank Hank Haney for uh, the outstanding job you've done. Shall we give him an expression of love for the outstanding job? All of the various labor unions, all of the various organizations. And I want to especially thank Anna, because when you look at me, you see the present. When you look at Anna, you see the future. And the future is in good hands. Thank you, Anna. Friends, Dr. King, Martin Luther King, gave us some sage advice when he reminded us that life is an inescapable network of mutuality tied to a single garment of destiny. What impacts one directly impacts all indirectly. This is important advice because I can remember when we had the controversy about wearing seat belts. There were people who refused to wear seat belts, but we had to remind them that if they didn't wear a seat belt and they were hospitalized, that cost would be passed on to all of us. That's the indirect way that one person being harmed can impact the rest of us. The same thing applies even if you have insurance, because the insurance is going to go up. Your rates will go up 
because of the tens of thousands of people who have to use the insurance. So what impacts one directly impacts all indirectly. But when it comes to this virus, we have the added, the added circumstance of passing the virus on to other people. And the numbers speak for themselves. Of the 254 counties in Texas, 237 have elevated levels of the virus. The numbers speak for themselves. The seven-day average for persons who are hospitalized is 10,000 per day. The numbers speak for themselves. 95% of the COVID cases are among those who are unvaccinated. The numbers speak for themselves. We have a duty, a responsibility, and an obligation to the future to make sure that we mandate, that we mandate masks. A mandate is something that we can demand because if we fail to do so, we are failing the future. We are failing the children. These are babies. Yes. They can't make decisions for themselves to protect themselves. It's up to us to protect these babies from the harm yes. that can befall them. Yes. And we are here to do so. Yes. So we are not here to ask. We are not here to beseech. We are not here to appeal. We are here to demand yes. that masks be worn. Yes. Not just in this school district but across the length and breadth of this state in all 254 counties because this COVID virus is spreading like wildfire across the state of Texas. And finally this, to the governor. Governor, I respect you. Governor, I have no reason to make this personal, but governor, what you are doing is wrong. It is just wrong. You are a governor who believes that government should leave decisions to the local authorities. You have said that you don't want the federal government to intercede. Well, governor, you ought to do the same thing for the local governments and let the local school districts make these decisions. Don't stand in the way of saving lives, governor. This is a chance for us to be on the right side of righteousness, not just the right side of history, but the right side of righteousness. And if we're going to be on the right side of righteousness, we have got to protect our children. Thank you again, all of you who have assembled. And let's all contact school boards and let them know that you want a vote for a mandate. Do so. God bless you. Thank you, Representative Green. Let me try to summarize our message today very briefly. Parents, teachers, students have all been looking forward to returning to in-class in instruction. We know that's where kids do best. But that was before the Delta variant got out of control and this current surge happened. And in these conditions, when our hospital beds are full, in these conditions, school districts need the authority and have the obligation to do what they need to to protect students and school employees and our families at home. And what we don't need is Governor Abbott sticking his nose in our business and trying to stop school districts from doing what they need to do to protect kids. What they need to do is follow CDC guidance and make sure that everyone on campus wears masks. It's not that complicated. It's a piece of clothing. I put on my glasses every day. I put on my mask every day. It's simple. There's no infringement of freedom. In fact, it's making us all free because it's keeping us alive if we wear masks. So the governor has imposed an executive order trying to stop schools from doing that. And fortunately, we have courageous leaders in our local school district like Superintendent House, who are calling upon HISD School Board today to pass, tomorrow to pass a, a, a proposal to require masks in HISD facilities. It's what Austin ISD has done and Dallas ISD, San Antonio and, and Bear County has sued for the right to do that. Fort Worth has adopted it. HISD now needs the courage 
the courage to do what is right for our kids when they're being abandoned by the governor. Abandoned. That's what we're calling for today. We have unions from eight different school districts here today. All Dean AFT, Houston Federation of Teachers, Fort Bend AFT, Cypher AFT, Northeast AFT, HESP, did I miss anyone? And the Painters Union are all out here today, along with parents and students, to send a, a simple message. All Gulf Coast school districts need to stand up for our kids yeah. and keep them safe and keep them alive. Stand up, stand up. by wearing masks. Stand up, stand up. By, wearing masks. by wearing masks. Stand up, stand up. by wearing masks. By wearing it's not that complicated. It just needs, it needs adults. It needs adults to stand up when the governor won't do it for our kids. That's what we're here today to say. At this, at this point, we'll take questions. People, individuals are here as well for uh, interviews if you would like. We'll take questions either as a group um, or, uh, or individually as you like. Um, Superintendent House just came out to express his appreciation to the, student, to the employees of HISD and the parents and the students that are joining with them today to call for masks so that our schools can operate and that our staff and students can be safe. We appreciate him standing up. We call upon the HISD school board to do the same. So in a media briefing with uh, Dr. Uh, Superintendent House just moments ago, he said they're actually not going to vote, that the board fully supports his decision that there will be a mask mandate wow. in place for the first day of school. That's fantastic. <laughs> Really excited to see that. We thank Dr. House. We thank the HISD school board for their leadership in the vacuum that the governor has created by not allowing school districts to protect our kids by wearing masks. So we thank, we thank them for doing that. The leadership in the state right now is coming from our cities and our school districts in the cities when the Republican dominated legislature is abandoning us. It is, we are so happy to see folks standing up at our city level Mayor Turner requiring uh, city employees to wear masks, school districts like HISD coming out, Austin, Dallas, ISD, that's the path we need to move forward on. Other questions? Pardon me? What about TA? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can you, I'm sorry. The, Texas agent, the Texas Education Agency is also not doing what needs to be done to protect our kids. Last year, they, they, um, they, they made sure that our kids had contact tracing, our schools had contact tracing if anyone was sick. Um, they made sure that schools reported to parents if kids were sick. Their recent guidance in the, just last week, in the middle of this surge, just told schools they don't need to do any of that. Parents no longer need to be notified. Contact tracing doesn't need to be done. Now, Rice University is going to be doing all that. Why can't public schools do that? Why do we have two standards? Don't our kids count when they go to public schools? They do. And that's why unions and parents all together are saying they need to stand up. So Governor Abbott, the Texas Educa Education Agency, you are in the wrong on this. Representative Green is absolutely right. You are in the wrong, and we need to stand up to make sure that our kids are safe right now. Other questions? Do any of our speakers want to make any, any additional comment? Anybody who hasn't spoken from our... Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I do want to give a special thank you to Dr. Gaffney because Alden ISD is still going to do their COVID dashboard. They still will be notifying employees and parents of positive cases on the campuses. And that is so important. The only thing we need now is Alden ISD to have a mass mandate. Thank you. My name is Glenda McCall, Glenda Guzman McCall. I am the president of Fort Bend AFT, and I just want to send a shout out and a thank you to our board trustee, Jim Rice, the president of TASB, who called on the governor to please allow districts to have more choice in this matter and to allow funding for virtual learning. I just want to send a shout out to him, and I ask that all the rest of the board members for Fort Bend ISD 
follow along and do the right thing in our district. Thank you. Thank you, Glenda McCall. My name is Shonda Velo, and I'm the proud president of Northeast Houston American Federation of Teachers, serving Glenna Park ISD, Sheldon ISD, and Channel View. And I'm here today to show solidarity with our union brothers and sisters and asking that all three of my school, our school district, mandate mask wearing on all campus facilities in all times. Thank you. I want to thank the superintendent of HISD for sending that message to us, indicating that while there won't be a vote, there will be a mass mandate. I think that's exceedingly important because he has demonstrated that in a very short period of time, he cares about the children here in HISD. Now that means a lot to me, and I know it means a lot to the parents of these children. So to Dr. House, we say thank you and continue to protect our children. Thank you. That concludes the press conference. If anybody would like to do additional interviews, we're available. Thank you.